historic Tahlequah. My guest for this segment of the program is Fred Gibson. He's a longtime resident of Tahlequah, and we're going to talk again about life along Bear Creek or Town Branch and what it has meant to Tahlequah. Now, Fred, we were talking about how in the beginning uh, the Cherokees probably selected this site for the capital because of the springs and the creek and the natural waters. Yeah, that's right. And you were telling me some interesting things about uh, the 30s and early 40s and the fish hatchery and the ballpark. And can you just go ahead and tell us some things about that? <laughs> <laughs> well, Beth, uh, I practically lived along that creek all of my young life because it was such a central part of the uh, area around Tahlequah. We um, and many other farmers, when the uh, drought came in the 30s, drove our horses and wagons to that creek and brought barrels and tubs to put them over, over them and we filled up the barrels and took them home to water our livestock and our gardens. Yes. And by the time you got home, a fourth of it had splashed out. <laughs> but nevertheless, we uh, kept the livestock alive and uh, so forth. And uh, the people fished uh, all along the creek in those days because they were actually uh, fish that were large enough to eat. And of course, you uh, went to the creek to get uh, uh, bait to go down to the river to fish. Right. <laughs> and the creek flows into the Illinois. There you go. That's right. And <clears throat> we're actually we're just uh, we're not that far from the river. Right. From this area mm -hmm. here, uh, we uh, frequently walked to the river. At least the kids did. Uh -huh. Our parents didn't. They. Drove. Drove the wagon. Huh? Yes, but um, we would go to the river and fish all day. We uh, could cut fishing poles in the cane bricks along the river, let them dry, and uh, get a line and a few fish hooks from Purdy's Sporting Goods store up here. On Muskogee Avenue. Yes, and uh, you could spend an entire summer in that kind of activity. And actually, you could follow the creek all the way down to the river. Yes, you you could. didn't have to go by the road. Uh -huh. And that was always such an interesting place. Uh, I uh, uh, must have been, uh, the first time I came through there by myself, uh, I was about five years old. and. Uh, I knew that our farm was over here if I just kept going in that same direction. So I told my dad I'm going to go home and I just, and he let me. <laughs> <laughs> I came across the, the um, uh, hills that uh, it came uh, pretty close to the, the uh, motel up there and then came across, waded the creek and went home. For about seven years, I uh, uh, walked home from a Sequoia grade school, and it went right by, went south, right by the fish hatchery. And on one side was the ballpark, and on the other side was the fish hatchery, and I could take my choice of paths home. <laughs> and the first time I made that walk, I thought that was the most wonderful walk in the world at five years old. And I wish that we lived two or three miles farther along so I could go along. The second day I walked home, I thought, this is the longest <laughs> trail I ever took. <laughs> but it, uh, it uh, worked out, and the fish hatchery was just a wonderland to kids in those days. It was fenced off, but uh, Mr. Gerald, the uh, supervisor or the Manage. ranger manager uh -huh. uh, allowed the kids to go in there and play and the front and the sides were fenced but the creek side was open oh and uh, uh, you could go down and you could wade across the creek and uh, play in the water and uh, we'd of course try to to uh, dam up the creek <laughs> <laughs> with carry rocks and so forth and on the other side there were a series of large caves that you could walk in and walk quite a ways back there. Really? They've been uh, 
caved in now. I mean, the 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 uh, city or whoever has uh, has uh, broken them down, but. <sighs> But you could walk. They were big enough to walk in, and and uh, then you had to bend over to go back in there. And of course, we didn't go very far back. But still, it was spring water running out of it. There were about uh, six or seven huge ponds of uh, a fish hatchery, and they were. Uh, maybe I suppose it must have been 15 feet high. And uh, climbing up those, they, they were uh, bunk uh, type. They, the, the pond was on top of the ground, not down, down in, in the, ground. the ground. And they spread the, uh, and they put the fish in there as fingerlings. And then uh, when they got ready to take the fish out, uh, when they had grown, they let the water out and went in with the seines. And saying the fish. And saying the fish. Oh, I wish we had another <laughs> hour, but we're going to have to end this segment. Maybe we can have you on again this show and tell some more things. This has been wonderful, Fred. It's been a pleasure, Beth. Well, it's been a pleasure to have our uh, listening and uh, watching audience uh, visit us at Historic Talapa on uh, Channel 25, INTV. Sponsored by Madeira's title at closing.